Hi there and welcome to this short tutorial for motion matching for Unity. If you haven't already watched the quick start guides, go and watch them. There's two parts and they will give you a brief overview, a, a general broad touch on all the motion matching stuff. And it's a good start before we start getting into the nitty gritty details which we're going to start doing now. So go have a look at those and come back if you haven't already. We're going to look today at config modules and how we can just, it's a quality of life thing for our preprocessors. So let's have a look at that. So we have this config override section here and in the quick start we skipped it, we didn't use it. And basically what it is, it's a way that we can set up this trajectory and pose configuration once and we can use it between a lot of different preprocessors. Now you could might only have one preprocessor in your project and so maybe you don't need this however if you do this can save a lot of time so let's have a look at what that actually does let's create a module we'll right click in our project create mxm core modules and let's say motion match config now when I look at the inspector for this you can see it's very familiar it looks like a part of the mxm preprocessor we can drag in our Kyle robot and we can add our trajectory points. I'll set this up just as I had before. And we can set up our pose joints that we want to match, left foot, right foot, and hips. Now that config module is its own separate asset. And now we can drag and drop it in there and it'll override our other settings. Um, so we can see now that our robot Carl's grayed out, we can't change it because it's being taken from this config module and also our trajectory configuration and pose configuration are overridden by that module. So now you can just reuse that constantly. You don't have to keep doing it, uh, provided that you have preprocessors that use the same configuration. Our pose interval is kept separate on a per preprocessor basis. And there's a few reasons for this that I won't go into. So there's a bit more that we can override to make things a bit easier. If we go to our tags and events, now you might not understand what tags and events are right now, but that doesn't matter. This is just to give you an awareness that these um, override modules exist. Basically, we can define a whole bunch of tags that we're able to then later tag up on our animations um, by name. So in this case, I wanna tag up some animations for crouch so that when my player presses the C key, I require a crouch tag and it's just easier for me to know what a crouch tag is if I name it crouch. So this is where we define our tags. We've got 32 tags for require, uh, 32 tags for favoring and 32 user tags. Uh, now don't worry if you don't know what that all means. It's just know they're there and we can give them names. Now we can also override these here. If we right click, go create MXM core modules and tag naming. Now we get a familiar inspector that has all of those tag names um, and we can just fill them in here and reuse those tag namings for different MXM preprocessors. Let's drag it in and we can see those fields get overridden. The next thing we can also override with these little modules is events. So events are basically things where um, you want to play a specific animation from start to end like a sword attack or a backflip or a vault. Um, so some examples of events in the MXM demo is this jump up, this jump down, these vaults, uh, all of that. So all of these uh, sort of actions are events while they're not completely motion matching. So the motion matching system matches into these events seamlessly and also out of these events seamlessly. So you don't have to worry about it, whether you're using a left foot forward vault or a right foot forward vault. The motion matching takes care of that for you. You just tell it you want a vault event or something like that. And when we set up our composites, we can actually tag in where those events are and what what event ID they reference. Then at runtime, we just say, hey, I want a vault up event, do it. So this is where we define all our event IDs and it's li they're literally just IDs at this point. So we can create a event naming module, give our, name our events here. Um, and to get to that, we go right click create MXM core modules event naming. I already had one here. And we can simply drag that in there 
and that overrides that. So that's pretty much all the overrides that we have in here. Um, that's probably all we're going to go into for this tutorial. Mostly wanted to just cover the config modules and what they are and how to use them. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.